we want to take a few minutes and look at a particular type of graph called an ogive. Now I know it looks like ogive, but it's ogive. <laughs> That's how it's pronounced. So an ogive is a line graph that uses upper class limits on the horizontal axis and a cumulative relative frequency or cumulative percent on the vertical axis because of course cumulative percent and relative frequency are the same thing. Now notice that um, it could use cumulative frequency, but they generally do not. Um, that's because they're, they're by far more commonly used with cumulative percent and cumulative relative frequency. Now, just as when it's a polygon, there is a fake first class. That's not really part of the table um, that exists. <laughs> and it has a frequency of zero. So you're going to start off at zero and they grow. Um, these graphs are particularly used in cumulative percents as growth charts, such as per, um, in a pediatrician's office. So you've ever seen a growth chart, which I will show you what that looks like. There you go. This one is for birth to 36 months for boys. This is the length for their age and their weight for their age. They're percentile graphs. It, it doesn't quite look like it. They're ogives, um, but they're slightly modified ogives. So you'll learn about these in um, nursing classes if you're going on in nursing, for example. And of course, if you have children, you'll eventually learn about them. But they're, they're basically glorified ogives. By the way, another um, terminology for ogive is percentile graph. So when you see those growth charts, they're percentile graphs, right? All right, so now let's continue with our example because it'll make a lot more sense as usual with an example. So we have down below an ogive that is drawn for that data set, for those final exam data. Now, what type of ogive are they talking about? Well, that would mean we have to look here and it says cumulative relative frequency. So it's a relative frequency ogive. as opposed to if it was whole numbers, it would be a frequency ogive, which again, we generally don't use very often, but it might show up every once in a while, you never know. Now, the first class of the cumulative frequency distribution, the third class, okay, so let's look here. Remember that this class right here is fake. <laughs> there was no class that was that low. So that is a fake start right there. It starts at zero, see how it has a Y value of zero, and it starts at 29.9. So the first class in the actual table is right here. And then there's the second class, the third class, and so on, right? Okay, so the first class of the upper, um, of this distribution well, 29.9 is right before 30. So it was 30 all the way up to 39.9. So I would say the first class was 30 to 39.9 because 29.9 is fake. It's not really part of the table, but 29.9 is right before 30. So 30 is the start of the next class. So that was the first class. Okay, so the second class, right, if the first class was 30 up to 39.9, the next number after that is 40. So the second class, you can see, ends at 49.9 because these are the upper class limits. So the second class is 40 to 49.9. And we actually have this table, of course, because we have it um, earlier in the notes. So you can actually verify that I'm right. But this is how to read this from this particular graph. Remember that these are the upper class limits down here. So on that horizontal axis, it says it right here. It has the upper class limits on the horizontal axis. So these numbers right here are the upper class limits. They're the last values in those classes. So 39.9, 49.9, and so on, those are the upper class limits. First class, second class, third class, third class, which is the next question, would be well, the next number after 49.9 is 50, and it ends at 59.9. So that would be the third class. So 50 to 59.9. Oop, I can't show you both parts. <laughs> so I just have to write that and then go back here. So that's the third class. And so on. So that's how you interpret those values from that ogive. And you can see you're accumulating your percents, 
right? Because it's the same values that we received when we did cumulative relative frequency. So at 59.9, for example, see how it's at 0.1 and some change, 0 0.1, 0 0.18, somewhere around there? Because of course, right here in the table, 59.9 was 0.176. So that cumulative relative frequency right there, it's what's showing up on this graph right here. So I could actually label this one if you wanted to. This one is 0.03, this one was 0.079, and this one was 0.176, and so on. And you can see it verified over here, because this is 0.1, that's 0.2, so that's about 0.176. It's exactly 0.176. All right, now the next part, they want us to interpret the meaning of the dot at x equals 69.9, which is right here. So they want us to interpret the meaning of that dot. Okay, well, it looks like it's at about 0.2. So this is 0.3 right there in the middle, and it's just a little bit above 0.3, right? So maybe like 33. So we would say 33% about, because we're eyeballing this, if we pretend that we don't have the table from the previous page. So if you look at the table on the previous page, we can actually tell it's 32.7%. But if we don't have that, you're just kind of eye winging it. So if you say 34, 33, 32, somewhere in there. So about 33% of students scored 69.9% on the test. It was on the final exam. Actually, I could say on the Math 133 final. Or lower, right? Scored that value or lower. Actually, maybe I should put that here scored 69.9% or lower. It's better to put it there. And this was in 2018. So I'll just finish that right there. So you could say less, you could say lower, whichever way you want to, you know, you could say lower whichever word makes you happy, right? So 33, about 33% 33 of students scored, right? And it's because this number right here, what you're doing is it's 69.9 comma 33, right? Roughly. So you're saying, hey, 33% of students scored this number or below, right? Because you've accumulated up to that value. If you want to think of it in terms of percentiles, you could say if you scored a 69.9, you're in the 33rd percentile, right? 33% of students are below, at or below your score. So that would be, um, we haven't quite learned percentiles, but if you want another interpretation, a student that scores, I'm, I'm helping you out with, with percentiles from chapter three, scores 69.9% is in the 33rd percentile, which means 33% of students scored at or below their value. So that's another way to interpret it. That's what percentiles mean. Percentile is the percentage that is below your score. It particularly shows up with things like SATs and ACTs, that kind of exam, um, also heights and weights of children. If you look at the growth chart right there at the top, it's talking about percentiles right there, right? So it's the percentage that are at or below that child's height or that child's weight, that kind of thing. So that's another way to interpret that value.